Hello and welcome to the program. I'm so glad you decided to join me today. Today I want to talk to you about pursuing holiness. Holiness meaning being set apart to God. And this is something that a lot of people have a very limited understanding about. A lot of people think holiness is just about, you know, following a bunch of strict rules or that it's just, you know, outwardly. No, holiness is it's being set apart to God. You love what God loves. You hate what God hates. You, you are in that place where you want to walk in purity of heart, where you want to be set apart to him and you disconnect from the world and you focus on God. He's your number one priority. Intimacy with him, worshiping him, ministering to him, reading his word, being in his presence, living a life that is pleasing to him, one that shows that you have the character of the new man, not the old man. So a lot of people, are, they've been born again, but they, they're still letting their flesh dictate to them. They're still letting all these, these things creep in and they don't know how to move forward in their walk with God. Well, we need to be pursuing daily, you know, the lifestyle of holiness. And of course, our number one pursuit is Jesus himself, but a part of our, of our pursuing, you know, Jesus and that intimate relationship with him is pursuing walking in holiness, being set apart to him, being, you know, in that place, like I said, where you are, totally focused on him, where your your conduct, your attitude, the, the, uh, the words you speak, the way you carry yourself, your lifestyle is pleasing to him. It's set apart to him. That when people see you, they see Christ living you. That should be our goal is, Lord, I don't want people to see me. I want them, I want them to see you living in me and that will draw them to you. See, when they see, because we may be the only Bible some people read, so our pages better be shining. We better, you know, not just, you know, talk the talk, but walk the walk. And we're gonna, it's gonna be something that you're gonna have to pursue. You're gonna be determined to wanna live in that place of holiness. We have to walk and live in holiness on a daily basis. That's what we're called to do. In 1 Peter 1, 13 through 16, it says, therefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. For it is written, be holy for I am holy. And that's written in, in Leviticus chapter 11. And, he's, and this is not something that was just for the old covenant. Now this is something that is a principle of God. It is the lifestyle of the believer. As we've talked about before, you know, repentance is the lifestyle of a believer. Well, also holiness. We need to be set apart to him. But so many don't seem to care about this. They just live like they want to. You know, like the old saying, if it feels good, do it. Well, that can't be the attitude of a Christian. No, we have to be, our lives have to be, you know, fashioned after the Lord Jesus. We have to imitate him. It means we have to be like him in that sense that we are walking. You see, the Bible says, you know what, we have to walk as Jesus walked means we have to, because we're the body of Christ. He's the head and we're the body. And we need to be, you know, in that place where we are totally in line with him. We're totally in that place of walking as he walked. And Jesus didn't allow his flesh to dictate to him how he was going to, uh, you know, present his life. No, he only did what pleased, what pleased the Father. And we have to do what pleases the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because we do serve a triune God. But this is something that we have to pursue with all of our hearts. We have to daily get wake up and say, Lord God, I just want to walk before you. I humble myself. So you, you're going to have to you know, be in that place where you humble yourself before God. Humility is, 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 is something that, that each Christian needs to be seeking. We have to seek that to be humble servants of God, humble sons and daughters of the Most High God. We can't just, you know, let everything, the flesh, the world, the devil dictate to us how our things are supposed to be. No, we have to take authority over the, the devil. Take authority over your flesh. Discipline your flesh and bring it into submission to the word of God. As it says in Romans, we have to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We can't allow the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life to dictate to us how we're going to live. No, we have to live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Think about it. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 through 8, the Bible says, Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more 
just as you see from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, and that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter because the Lord is the avenger of all such. As we also forewarned you and testified, for God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. And therefore he who rejects this does not reject man, but God who also has given us his Holy Spirit. So if you reject, you know, this call, this commandment of, of walking in holiness, of being in that place of sanctification, then it says you're not rejecting man, you're rejecting God. I mean, you're despising God. And that's not a place you want to be if you have any sense. As we just looked at in, in 1 Peter 1, he says, be holy for I am holy. Again, he's the, he's the head, we're the body. He says, not in your former conduct, in your ignorance, I mean, when you didn't know any better, but now you know better. You're a new creature in Christ, and now you have to walk as that. Yes, when you got born again, your spirit was saved, but guess what? You're still going to have to deal with the flesh. doesn't mean that everything is hunky-dory in the sense that you're never going to have to deal with your flesh. Daily, you're going to have to deal with your flesh. You're going to have to bring your flesh into submission to the Word of God. You're going to have to discipline your flesh. The way we resist the devil is by being submitted to God. And part of our submission to God is walking in holiness, bringing our flesh in alignment to his word, to his commandments. But also it says that we are to um, abstain from sexual immorality, that we should know how to possess our vessel in sanctification. I mean, we're to abstain from fleshly lust. Because guess what? The flesh wants to do what it wants to do. But you're going to say, oh, no, no, not today, flesh. Not tomorrow either, not any day. I'm walking in the word of God. I'm setting time for prayer, for worship of God. I'm setting time for the word. When I go forward... And, and I'm going about my daily life. I'm going to do it so it's pleasing to you. And see, we have to be those people who have that tenacity. You can't, you can't just say, oh, I just throw my hands up. I don't know how to do it. Well, guess what? The Holy Spirit, if you're born again, the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you. Allow him to, to um, teach you, to guide you into his truth. Allow him to help you to walk in that place of humility, that place of, of, of uh, being you know, set apart to him. Again, that's what holiness is. We're set apart to God. And we're not, you know, in, entangled with the world, with the world. We're in the world, but we're not to be of the world. So there's the difference. The Bible says in, in, in uh, First John that, that the, the, the lust of the eyes, the pride of lies, the lust of the flesh, all these things, it's of the world. It's not of the Father. But those who do God's will are the ones that abide forever. A part of his will is walking in holiness, being, you know, in that place of uh, set apartness to him. But notice it says that he didn't call us in uncleanness. He called us in holiness. But if you reject that, then you're rejecting God himself. You're actually despising him. You're just throwing your nose up to God. So think about that the next time you just say, oh, you know what? I don't have to walk in holiness. All that is is just a bunch of man-made commandments. No. Now, now men do have their own commandments they make that they, they call holiness, which is not holiness. But God shows us in his word what holiness is. Holiness is. And it's being set apart to him. Because when you're truly walking in holiness, the things that offend God, they're going to offend you. And the things that glorify God, those things are going to be right there where you, you want to um, partake of. We have to partake of his divine nature. And a part of that is partaking of, of, of that place of holiness. We're supposed to walk in holiness. We're supposed to you know, be those, as we're going to see in a moment, who have clean hands and a pure heart. In 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 6, and this is something that is... Very important if we want to, you know, continue our, our walk with God in being set apart to him, is you're going to have to disassociate with, with a lot of stuff, with a lot of people and a lot of activities, because what they're doing is they're drawing you back into the muck and mire of the world. And we see this happening all the time. Second Corinthians 6, 14 through 18, and then 7 verse 1. It says, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. 
Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Then 7 verse 1 says, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. In the fear of God, that means not the spirit of fear that the enemy gives, but the fear of God is a reverential fear. It's a clean fear. It's a respect for God, a holy respect. And that's, that goes hand in hand with walking in holiness. But notice it says that we have to not be uh, unequally yoked together with unbelievers. See, a lot of people are, are, are trying to hobnob with, uh, with the crowd that they hobnob before they got saved. And it's, what it's doing is bringing, it's drawing them back into the world. Oh, they say, oh, you know what? I can handle it. Guess what? You're going to have to disassociate. You're going to have to cut off. Uh, you know, ungodly soul ties. You're going to have to cut off all those friendships and toxic relationships, toxic people, toxic, toxic situations, because all they're going to do is cause you to go back into that stuff. Again, we're in the world, but we're not to be of it. We're not to be associated with those things that we, you know, were saved and delivered from. The things that that we, you know, like it says, we saw, we saw in First Peter, our former conversation. In the former conversation, you, you, you used all kinds of nasty words. You used all kinds of of expressions and, and attitudes and had friendships that were ungodly. But now you're a Christian. Now you're to be set apart to God and make and make friendships with godly people and to, to show forth yourself in true, the true conduct of a believer, the character of the new man. Again, the one who has clean hands and a pure heart, the one who is set apart to God. You abhor what is evil and you cling to what's good, as it says in Romans 12, 9. We have to get this. We want to be able to, to walk on this, this narrow path, to walk in our journey of faith, our, our, our daily walk with God. We're going to have to pursue him with all of our hearts. And a part of that is pursuing holiness, being set apart to him faithfully every day. So we can't be, un, he says, because what, what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness and what, or lawlessness and what communion has light with darkness? What accord has Christ with with a uh, Belial or you know an unbeliever, there's no there's no, there's no um, uh, compatibility there. Light and darkness can't dwell together. No, we have to be um, people around people in situations of like precious faith. We're gonna have to come up as, as it says, come out from among them and be separated. Separate yourselves from those people in situations and separate your, yourself unto God in true righteousness and holiness. It says, do not touch as, what is unclean. We have to remove the unclean thing out of our midst. He says, then I'll receive you, but not before. If you are, are dabbling in the unclean, then guess what? Then by, by default, you, by your own free will, is allowing God to, to, to keep his distance from you because he's not going to dwell on the, the place where there's unclean mess. He's not going to do it. He's a holy God, and he commands us to walk in holiness to the best of our ability, to, to be set apart to him, to pursue it with all of our might. Think about it. In Hebrews 12, Hebrews 12, uh, verse uh, 10, the second part of verse 10 says that we may be partakers of his holiness, of his holiness. We don't have any of our own. We have his holiness. Just like we don't have our own righteousness, we have his imputed to us. We have to partake of it. And we can do it because he's given us his word. He's given us the Holy Spirit. Remember, the spirit that he's given us is holy, not unholy. And we're supposed to, to, to be led by the Spirit. We're supposed to follow him, what he says. So many people follow the flesh. That's why they can't walk in holiness. That's why they, 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 they try, but it's futile. Well, don't try to uh, walk by man's commandments. You know, because like I said, a lot of people think that holiness is just, you know, some outward set of rules you're supposed to strictly follow. No. When you're truly walking in holiness, there are things that you're, 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 you're one at going to want to disassociate from, not because somebody just threw a list of rules at you, because you see what his word says. His Holy Spirit will convict you. And guess what? Those things will be repulsive. And you'll be offended by those evil things. And you don't want them in your life. And you'll tell other people by the Spirit, you know, what God says is for your life. Well, how God says you're to conduct yourself. And he says to be holy as he is holy. Again, that's not a suggestion. It's a commandment. A commandment that is not only in the Old Testament, but, but also one of the New Testament commandments. Think about it. And then in verse 14 of the same chapter, it says, pursue peace with all people 
and holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Now think about that. Pursue peace and holiness. It didn't, it didn't just leave it at that one thing. We're to pursue holiness. We're to pursue a holy life with all of our might. Without which no one will see the Lord. You won't even see God in his fullness if you're not pursuing holiness. If you're just pursuing all the, the, the things of this world, like I said, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. If you're seeking all that, guess what? Then all you're doing is you're just giving into the bait of Satan because Satan is the god of this world system. And look around. It is, is, it's a disaster. But you can rejoice because guess what? You're not of the world. You're in it to be a light in a dark place to make a difference. But you're not of it. You're of that greater kingdom. You're of the, the kingdom that is the kingdom above all kingdoms. And Jesus is the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. And he's the one that you need to please. He's the one that you need to be set apart to. As David says, to behold his, the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple. He said, Lord, I've loved the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Well, guess what? You can be in that place where his glory dwells too, just like David, if you will determine to do your part and to be set apart to the Lord and to disassociate with those people and situations that want to um, bring you into the muck and mire of the world, all that filthiness of the flesh. You need to move that out. You need to get rid of it. Renounce it. Cut off the, the, uh, the, the legal rights to it. Cut off the curses attached to it and start walking in the fullness of God and his word. Be set apart to him, loving what he loves and hating what he hates. Not because, you know, of some just strict risk, but because your heart is set apart to him, because you want to please him, because you want to be a vessel that he can use. You want his presence to be upon you. So that draws people. Sometimes you will not even have to say anything. You can be a witness. Just people see the light that's in you. They'll see that there's something different about you. Why? Because you're set apart to God. And it's not it's showing on your outward man, even though it's from the inside, it's showing outwardly. You don't have to say anything. Think about it. In Ephesians chapter one. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. There it is again, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. A part of our, our walking in love, a part of our relationship with the Lord is being holy, walking in that place of holy. That means being set apart to him. It's not going to say that we're not going to make mistakes. As long as we're in this flesh and body, we're going to make mistakes. Think about it. But that's why we have the blood. That's why we need the blood. That's why we need to, to have a lifestyle repentance. When we do mess up. And his blood will cover that. His blood will, will just, you know, completely erase all those sins and iniquities and those things that we do, they're not pleasing. But for somebody just to think that that the, all, all they have to do is say a sinner's prayer and then they can just live like they want to, and guess what? They show themselves that they're not a son of obedience. They're, as the Bible says, a son of disobedience. They're sons because they're born again, but they choose to be disobedient to his word willfully, and they go forth and just do what they want to. Well, guess what? You're not going to be able to, to see the Lord in his fullness that way. You're not going to be able to inherit the fullness of the inheritance that, that he wants to give you, that he purchased on the cross. No, we have to be set apart to God. We have to, because he is a holy, righteous God. He desires that we walk in holiness. We walk in righteousness. We walk in peace. We walk in love. We walk faithfully to the commandments of his word. And then in chapter four of Ephesians, 17 through 24, it says, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their hearts, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. 
There it is again. Put off the old man and put on the new man. The new man was created in righteousness, true righteousness, and true holiness. It says that you weren't taught, taught this. He says the truth is in Jesus. You were taught by him. You weren't taught, you know, by the world, uh, you know, all the, the things out there. Why? Because it says these people, they have their understanding darkened. The ignorance that's in them, because the blindness of their heart, they don't see. They're ignorant. They don't see the truth, even right there in, in, before their eyes. Or they, or if they do see it, they reject it. As the Bible says in Hosea 4, 6, God's people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And because they reject knowledge, God will reject them for being priests to them. So you're supposed to be kings and priests unto the Lord. But if we reject his word, we reject his commandments, and one of the commandments is to, to walk and pursue holiness, then guess what? Then it, we're showing that we... Are rejecting him completely and you may not see see that in your own understanding but the bible says that if you reject the commandment of, of walking in holiness then you reject god himself it says we have to be renewed in the spirit of our minds put on the new man created according to god in true righteousness and holiness we have to put on the new man it's not just something that's going to fall on us you know because we said a sinner's prayer or even if we were baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's something that we have to do. We have to put on the new man, just like we have to put on the armor of God daily. We have to put on the new man because that old man wants to creep in. He wants to have his cake and eat it too. That's why you say, oh, no, not today. Not any day, devil. You're not coming in. You have to choose to put on the new man. And the new man is in true righteousness and holiness. Again, being set apart to God. And righteousness means we're in right standing with God. It means his way of doing and being right. Not our ways, because a lot of, of, of the person, people's ways is not according to the scriptures. People have their own ideas and opinions, and they don't line up with the word of God. That's why they're in the mess they are. You no, know, we have to only say, see, hear, listen to, and obey what God says. He's the final authority. God and his word are one and the same. And if you want to know what, what God's will is for your life in any certain situation, then get into his word. This is the roadmap to heaven. This is our 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 our. our our road, like I said, our roadmap, this is our, our spiritual compass right here. If you want to know what, what way to turn, guess what? Get into the word and let the word guide you. Let the Holy Spirit on the inside of you guide you. But don't don't listen to just what man says. Now, yes, I'm, I'm, there are people that, that, that are in the fivefold ministry, people that are teachers and pastors and leaders and, and things. And I'm not saying that you, you can't listen to counsel and listen to teaching because there are true teachers out there. But ultimate, the final authority is the word of God. Because guess what? There, there, there's no error in God's word. There's no error when the Holy Spirit speaks to you. People can get into error. People can allow the flesh to, to cause them to get into to mistakes and errors and stuff like that. But God, there's no mistakes in him. So you'll always come out on the top when you listen to God. But you're going to have to determine to be set apart to him. And that is going to take you... Daily spending time in his presence, daily spending time in his word, daily calling out to him, and he'll help you. He'll guide you. You can't walk in holiness on your own. Your flesh ain't going to help you do that. Your, your flesh needs to be disciplined. You're going to have to buy the spirit on the inside of you to choose to pursue holiness with all your might. And then in Romans 12, 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we have to renew our minds daily in his word, in his presence. We have to do a, a checkup from the neck up to get rid of stinking thinking. Think about it. We have to retrain our thinking. We have to, you know, just get rid of all that stuff that we thought that we knew, that we thought that was of God, that wasn't. And we have to just hit the erase button and start getting into God's word. It says we have to present our bodies a living sacrifice. He died for us. And all he's asking is that we would live for him. But a part of that living for him is to present our bodies a living sacrifice holy. It says acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. That's how we worship and fellowship with God, by presenting our lives to him in holiness. By saying, Lord God, help me to, 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 to break free from the dictates of the flesh, the dictates of what my, my, my emotions and my body wants to do. And say, Lord, allow your spirit who's in me to lead me and to guide me and to follow that. 
We have to read people who renew our minds daily in his word. And then in chapter 13 of uh, Romans, it says, uh, verse 11 through 14, and do this, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, and not in lewdness and lust, and not in strife and envy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. You don't even give the, the, the flesh an opportunity to have its way. No, put on the Lord Jesus. He's the armor of life. He's the one that we need to have because every, every um, uh, attribute of him, that's what you put on. When you're putting on uh, the Lord Jesus, you're putting on his righteousness, his holiness, his peace, his joy, his everything. He's everything. Same thing when we put on our armor for that protection when we go to the spiritual battle. That's what we had to put on the Lord Jesus. That's what we're putting on because every piece of the armor is, is an attribute of him, faith and, um, uh, and peace and righteousness. And think about it, all these things. But notice it says that we have to walk, let's walk properly and not in reverie and drunkenness and lewdness and lust, strife and envy. All that is of the flesh. All that is of the old man. You're a new creature in Christ now. I need to walk like it, act like it, talk like it. Put on the Lord Jesus and don't make any provision to fulfill the lust of the flesh in any area of your life, in your thoughts, in your in your emotions, in the, the, the conversations that you have. No, you have to retrain your thinking. You have to start walking as the new man, pursuing righteousness and holiness. That's how we show that we have a reverential fear for God, that we truly love him by being set apart to him. And again, yes, we're going to make mistakes. There's going to be times we're going to miss it. Again, that's why we need the blood. That's why we need repentance. That's why we need to get back up and not just think that, okay, I missed it, so I can't go forward. Yes, you can. David did. He was a mighty man of God. Yes, he missed it. And he did uh, uh, things that he wasn't proud of. But guess what? He repented and he came to God. And that's what we need to do. Say, Lord, create a, a, a steadfast spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart. Help me to, to be set apart to you. Because we need his help, baby. We can't do it on our own. But with him living on in the inside of us, and we're calling upon him, and we're walking according to his word, guess what? We can do it. You can. Matthew 5, 8. Jesus said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. They shall see God. Those that are pure in heart. Remember earlier it says that we looked at, you know, that you have to, to see God. You have to walk in holiness. He says, without holiness, no one will see God. Well, again, Jesus says it right here. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We're going to see God in his fullness when we, ha we have a pure heart before him. Just like Abraham, um, uh, we have to have that attitude. You know what, Lord, if your presence doesn't go with me, then I don't want to go either. I want to be where your presence is. I want to have my life so in tune with you. I want to see your face in, in the fullness of the glory. And God will reveal himself to you. In many ways, but first you're going to have to make the choice to have a to have a pure heart before him and to get out all that stuff that doesn't belong there and say, Lord, you take it, search me and know me and try my ways. And if there's anything that's in me that's not of you, Lord, you reveal it and take it and lead me in your everlasting way. Lead me on the highway of holiness. Lead me on that beautiful, narrow pathway, Lord God, which only leads to life and life more abundantly. So we have to have that mindset. Psalms 24. Three and four it says, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart and who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully. Then it goes on to say in verse five, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Think about it. So who may ascend into the hill of the Lord and stand in his holy place? And he answers, he who has clean hands and a pure heart and who doesn't lift up his soul to idols. You have to move idols out. That's a part of, of your sanctification holiness is getting all the idols and all the hindrances and distractions out. But we have to have clean hands and a pure heart. So a lot of people out there, I'm talking about Christians, have dirty hands and their hearts are not, are not pure. Their hearts are full of everything but God. Well, you're going to have to change that. You're going to have to come before him, humble yourself 
and be, as the Bible says in, in Peter, be clothed with humility. See, a lot of people, you know, they, they, they hate that word humility. They hate the word repentance. They hate the word holiness. Well, we're not supposed to hate those words. God himself is, an, is, 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 is the ultimate holy God. He's the ultimate, you know, righteousness, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. But he's not going to dwell in, 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 in any place where, 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 there's, where there's filth. It's not going to happen. We have to repent. We have to pursue holiness. And it's just something that we're going to have to, to choose to do. It's not going to fall on us, like I said, just because we were born again. It's not going to fall on us just because we said a sinner's prayer or, or because we received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Those things we need to do, absolutely. But we also have to say, Lord God, I'm choosing to walk in humility. I'm choosing to walk in holiness. I want to be set apart to you. I want to walk as you walk. I want to love what you love and hate what you hate. I want to be more like you, Lord, because you are my ultimate example. Think about it. And then in Deuteronomy 23, 14, and this goes hand in hand when we looked at in uh, 2 Corinthians earlier. It says, For the Lord your God walks in the midst of your camp to deliver you and give your enemies over to you. Therefore, your camp shall be holy that he may see no unclean thing among you and turn away from you. Think about that. He walks in the midst of the camp to deliver us. And that's what he is, a delivering God. But notice, there's a cause and effect because the Lord preached cause and effect. God says, I've done this. Now, if you'll do this, but this is the result you'll get. It says, therefore, your camp shall be holy and that he may see no unclean thing among you and turn away from you. So if there's uncleanness in your camp, you know, if you're allowing your, your temple to be defiled by the, the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, by people's, you know, vain philosophies and what the world says is the way to live your life, then guess what? Then guess what? Then God's going to turn away from you. He, he's not going to dwell in that place. He's only going to dwell in that place that is holy. So we have to 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 um, uh, get the unclean thing out. We have to get all that out and start pursuing after righteousness and holiness, pursue the Lord with every fiber of our being, because that's what he's called us to do. And that's how we're going to be able to walk and function properly, you know, in God's kingdom, in our day-to-day -day walk. Because like, again, I said, we're in the world. We're going to have to, to function, but we don't have to let the world dictate to us how we live. No, we are led by the spirit and this Holy Spirit will show us how to live. His word shows us how to live. And we have to get all the unclean stuff out of our camp. And we have to start pursuing after holiness with every fiber of our being because pursuing holiness is pursuing the Lord because he's a holy God. As it says in another place in Psalms, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. So start taking this seriously and get all that junk out of your life. And as it says in Colossians 3, and I, I, I encourage you to read the whole chapter of Colossians 3 because it talks about setting our minds on things above and not on things of the earth. We have to be set apart to him, put on the new man who is created in righteousness and holiness. And this is important. So we really take this seriously and start making up your mind today, right now, that you're not going to let the muck and mire of this world, the lust of the flesh and all this stuff get you to where you just feel you, you're going to give up and that you don't have how to, to walk properly as a Christian. You can. You can do it. The Holy Spirit on the inside of you will help you. He'll teach you. He'll, he'll lead you. But you're going to have to make the choice to say, yes, I want to be set apart to you, Lord. I want to walk in holiness. Because I want to see your face in the fullness. And you will, but you're going to have to do it God's way. So please take this seriously. And as always, remember that the word of God stands forever. Amen.